Welcome to Planet Oz. I'm Oz. And on Planet Oz, we love a good challenge. And this universe is excellent at presenting us with them. It will throw a paradox down like a gauntlet and tell us that our feeble minds are just not capable of grasping the answer. Let me give you an example. We're told that this universe or this reality that we live in has no beginning and no end both in terms of geography and in terms of time. So regardless of how far our telescopes search into the cosmos, we just find more cosmos. And no matter how deep our microscopes go into the quantum, we just find smaller and smaller units to give names to, but we don't seem to be getting any closer to whatever this limit is, if there is one, so we presume it to be infinite. And all the while, to make this even more complicated, we're told that this is a creation, that there is perhaps some incredibly unfathomable creator who made all of this. So that presents a paradox in the sense that we are now talking about something that has no beginning, no end, and yet, at some point, was created. So, perhaps, as humans, we have just enough hubris to seek an answer where the universe is telling us it's unknowable. Let's take a shot. Okay, so how can something have no beginning, no end, and yet be created? We need to start somewhere. So let's start with this video clip. Believe it or not, this man's hairstyle is not the most fascinating thing about this. His name is Greg Braden, and he's a sharp guy who's done some great work. And here, what he's demonstrating is that when you strike a droplet of water with frequencies of sound, it takes shape and it creates form. And as you increase the frequency of the tone, the shapes and forms get progressively greater and greater in their complexity. And you can see in here that there is actual geometry forming, where you have cubes and tetrahedrons, and it is believed that light interacts with energy in a similar way. So to put this all together, what he's demonstrating is the reason why uh, a lot of scientists and theorists believe that the fabric of our entire universe, the fabric of our entire reality, space and time, is geometrical. So maybe it could be fairly argued that this unfathomable infinite creator is actually some sort of brilliant geometrist. But we'll need more than just geometry to solve this puzzle we'll need a special kind of geometry, perhaps even a sacred geometry. Sacred geometry has become really popular in our culture these days. Tattoos and t-shirts are willy-nilly. This, in fact, is a sculpture of the flower of life that I typically have hanging on my wall. And as sacred geometry goes, this one's a big one. This is important flower of life. In fact, if you want a deep dive into sacred geometry, these books, Flower of Life, are awesome for that. And an aspect of this reminds me of these, which you might remember from your childhood, depending on how old you are. The magic eye. If you look at a design in these books, what you would do is open to a page and then you would put your eyes real close to the book. And then as it moves away slowly, all of a sudden, you see a three-dimensional image, vividly real. Once it locks in, you would swear you were looking through this page into a three-dimensional world. And you can do something similar with sacred geometry, the flower of life, for example. If you were to look at this, I don't know how it'll work while you're looking at uh, on the internet here, but if you cross your eyes and these patterns overlap, 
they will then produce an effect where it will kind of step out at you, three-dimensionally. And this happens because when you are looking at like one of these designs, for example, the design is replicating over and over and over again. So when your eyes, each eye finds a different example of the same design, it thinks that it's actually focusing on one thing in the middle. And the result is a very, very vivid, realistic illusion of three-dimensionality. And it just goes to show that simply by tuning our senses, we can perceive the reality we live in in a completely different way that appears to us no less real than any other version of the same reality. The reason that it's easy for our eyes to get confused when we're looking at a sacred geometrical design is because sacred geometry adheres to certain rules. And one of the rules is that it must be self-replicating. And uh, an easy way to imagine this is something more familiar to us in the form of the fractal design. And in a fractal design, no matter how far you zoom in on it or how far you zoom out, it's described as self-similar. And sacred geometry works in essentially the same way, except it isn't self-similar, it's self-replicating. No matter how small you go into the design, you are still going to find just endlessly smaller and smaller versions of the same thing. Same if you go out from it. It will just be bigger and bigger infinitely. So this suggests to us that if our reality has as its fabric a geometrical design that it's built on, and if that design is sacred geometry, then we can understand how it is that the matter of our universe extends seemingly infinitely outward and infinitely inward. So at this point, we might say to our universe, ha, you have a sacred geometrical structure, and from that, you are able to expand geographically outward infinitely and inward infinitely. But what if our universe says to us, that's a cop-out, that's an easy one. Why don't you try something more challenging, like time? All right, that sounds fun. Let's try time. To figure this one out, we're going to need some clues. And one clue might be Albert Einstein, who told us that space and time are not two different things. They're actually one thing, which we now refer to as space-time. And if space and time are actually part of one thing, and we know that the fabric of space is a sacred geometrical structure, then we might be able to presume, challenging though it may be for our third density brains to wrap around it, but we might be able to presume that time also has a sacred geometrical structure. So the conclusion we might arrive at with this thought process is basically this. If we are able to create a single moment in time built upon a foundation of sacred geometry, it means that as soon as we flip the switch and turn it on, it will self-replicate into an infinite past and an infinite future. In this way, it really doesn't matter at what point in history the switch is actually flipped. Because as soon as it is, it instantaneously has an infinite history and an infinite future. And therefore, the actual moment of activating it is not really any more special than those before it or after. So there was a time when we would have thought it an unfathomable, unsolvable paradox that a hairdo could be at once both business in the front while simultaneously party in the back. But if we can solve that, then a universe that has no beginning, no end, and yet is created, seems simple by comparison. And since we only have infinite time, I'm gonna have to wrap this one up. This is Oz from Planet Oz, signing off. Not